of all the years I've been doing music, man, like I think every producer owes it to themselves, man, to just do a project for yourself yeah. mm. that that doesn't have any you have no expectations mm. this is just you in a room with your beat machine having a good time man if you feel like singing on it sing on it man yeah. if you feel like spitting a poem on it whatever mm -hmm. that's what my project is that's and i got some great features now i'm gonna say it is jamming <laughs> but you know so it ain't too much me on there so y'all ain't gotta go like oh this gonna be some bullshit <laughs> nah because i did bring in some heavy hitters i got cats that I, you know I, I deal with some really dope cats so like everybody still is overseeing it like still gotta be dope but it's just fun man i, I called it the virgo super cluster man so okay. it's coming man I was trying to get some Virgo action this month, but it didn't work out. So. That in hip hop, man, we here at Salem Psalms. You know what time it is, it's the joint. That in hip hop, Salem Psalms, the joint. We got one of our feature producers on the joint mixtape, Mr. Will Power himself. Y'all yeah. know him. Y'all yeah, know him. Right. <laughs> they they, they yeah, yeah. no introduction. Yeah, man. You know, we, we, we've already had him. If you haven't checked out that interview, go back to that interview because that was dope. But this is a little bit different. What you got going on? Because you always got a lot of stuff going on. You're always shaking and moving. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy right now. Um, I just finished up Riot Phoenix's album, which is my artist. Uh, we signed her last year. And um, got the interview on that one too. Yeah, yeah. We'll like, check that out. Go check that out. <laughs> <laughs> nah, y'all show mad love. So uh, it's done now. Uh, we got 16 records coming out. So okay. we're trying to debate how to present it to the world. But for now, we got 16 records to kind of deliver to the public. So pretty excited about that. Um, I'm working with uh, this cat, Big Henry, mm -hmm. who. Uh, uh, most people Ooh. may know him from uh, the Trump Music Returns project. Mm -hmm. He was on there with ASAP Rocky and Yellow Wolf mm -hmm. on a gangster record. Mm -hmm. Really dope MC, man. We kind of got a project that's uh, really reminiscent to uh, the game documentary album. Mm. Oh, yeah. shit. Southern so, Fried version. Yeah, it's, so, it's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's Southern Fried, but it's got like... I kind of did something different. I went back into sampling a little bit, man. Like we kind of mixed it up, so it's not gonna be like trapped out. Yeah. You know, it's gonna have those elements, mm -hmm. but we went to sampling and, and, and chopping and doing some other things to mm -hmm. give it what it needed. Plus, with his southern drawl and his southern um, mm -hmm. dialect on the uh, on the records, man, it's it's really kind of dope, man. So that's, that's what's up. So what what inspired you to go back to that, like that chopping and sampling? Man, uh, really, my my producer Mike. Stallone, mm -hmm. uh, y'all may know him. People are starting to get to know his sound, mm -hmm. but he samples a lot. You know, he kind of mixes in the Southern flair with the with Northern hip hop because mm -hmm. he's kind of got roots in both places. Mm -hmm. I was kind of on my Dropbox one day working on Big Henry's project, and I started hitting some of these files that he sent me, just samples to mess with. Mm -hmm. It's like, I might as well mess with these. <laughs> <laughs> so it just turned. It went from messing around to an actual project. Right. So um, yeah, man. I, I used to sample a lot until I realized how much they rape you on the pavement on that. So I was just like, I'm over that. Yeah. I remember um, when we did the Trunk Music Return uh, review, I think all four of us was like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah, yeah, because he like hit, I mean, he hit us up like on Instagram. Like, yeah, I appreciate the shout out. Yeah, because he, like he Instagrammed the video, just that section where we were talking about him. And, you know, um, like for me, I never heard a full project. And then I realized he doesn't have one. He doesn't have one. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Like, you know, I know this story has been told a thousand times, but this is a real story. He he was in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Um, his, his story is pretty interesting because his mm -hmm. mother died and he got left with his younger brother. Mm. So he made the choice of not rapping and doing what he had to do to mm. take care of his younger brother, man. And now he made a, a promise to himself that once his brother got into college, once he got him into college, he was gonna quit hustling, and he did. And so the tables have turned, you know, that's when it came right around the time when the Gangsta Verse came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of, I kind of thought Yellow Wolf was gonna be able to you know, cultivated at the time, but yeah. of course Yellow got really busy and so Henry just kind of ended up sitting for a little while and you know, I was like, y'all, we got something really dope. Me and Yellow talked about it and it was like, yo, let's do it. So it's, it's a really dope project, man. So I'm excited I, about it. Yeah, I already know, man, because I'm, I'm a fan <coughs> of Henry because, you know, you hear him every, like, very sporadic, you know what I'm saying? But 
I want to hear you talk about um, Super Hot Beats, the label, because I know that when we covered you on the drop, you was in the process of separating <clears throat> yourself from being Super Hot Beats to just being yeah. willpower and making Super Hot Beats the label. Right. So obviously you got Mike Stallone, right. you have Riot Phoenix, and like what else are you doing with Super Hot Beats, the, the actual label? Well, it's on and popping now, man. You know, I've, uh, the last six months, I've backed away from producing outside of my own uh, brand and entity, man. Um, mm -hmm. We went real hard at the top of the year. We worked with Crit and, mm -hmm. and Yella, and we did everybody we could get our hands on. The blessings were overwhelming, but mm -hmm. the whole time, man, in, in the back of my mind, I was going, I really want to have my own label. I really want to stop giving this away mm -hmm. you know like let's make this be something so we can get the full recognition because when i was working on these other projects i love all of the stuff i i worked on i love all the people but the thing is if it's not yours it's not a lot of times they don't promote it like you wish they would i've been in situations where we worked hard on the record we went and mixed it we got it mastered mind you we weren't getting paid to do none of this and they still put out the version that I gave them as a demo copy. Wow. You know, like we've had this happen several times and it's not it's not anyone uh, specifically, I don't think it was ever done on purpose, but it just goes to show that when it's not yours, you can't really expect people to care about it as much as you do, you know? And that's something we really care about at Super High Beach, the sound and the quality of it and the mixes and that stuff is really important to me. Mm -hmm. We went on and did the label, man, and uh, it's been incredible, man, to be able to take an artist from off the street, bring them in the studio, put them in artist development, put them in physical development, mm -hmm. mental development. It's like the whole process took place within our organization. Now we have stuff that we're going to present to the world, man, that I think is going to really stamp us and put us in play. You know, I just think it's time, man. You know, I've been producing for everybody else yeah. for years, yeah. man. So. I'm pretty excited about it, man. So how's Yellow Wolf album coming along? Like that album is incredible. We just dropped the Till It's Gone, which is the single that came out. It was on Sons of Anarchy yeah. here recently, yeah, yeah. which blew my yeah. mind. I thought, honestly, y'all, yeah. I thought we was gonna get a little clip, bro. They gave us like the last five minute montage, mm -hmm. so they played the whole oh, song so, yeah. on the on the episode. So I like watching. I mean, I'm a, I watch Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, that's yeah. it's one of my favorite shows. Yeah, so yeah. like this was. A, Total orgasm for me, mm -hmm. man. I was like, yo, well, that's what's up. So so that that popped off and then his name kind of went off into places where it, it's never been. Exactly. So we started getting all these looks and all of these downloads mm -hmm. from places that, whoa, who is this Yellow Wolf guy? Which he was already, you know, in hip hop. Yeah. People know who he is, but outside of hip hop, you know, they're still, who is this? Yeah. So man, but it ended up like number seven on the billboard charts, bro. So like, wow. How that happened, God is good. So I just, I'm ready for it, man. The album is crazy. The, um, the video drops here in the next week or so. Okay. So they're really getting behind it. It's catching on radio, which we never, we didn't go to radio. So it's just happening, man. It's organically happening. That's the best way for this to happen. When people mm -hmm. are listening to a song and they don't realize you produced it or they don't even know, they just like the song. There's no political, backside no black no backstory no cosigns none of that stuff that normally happens in hip-hop for people to be successful it's not happening it's basically like yo i heard this song on sons of anarchy i shazammed it i downloaded it i bought it i ride to it every day mm -hmm. then they start researching who it was yeah. and it's like okay cool so this makes sense mm -hmm. That's where I like it, man. So that's what's up. That's what's up. So talk about, um, cause obviously Yellow Wolf is the biggest artist that you work with, and obviously you have an intimate relationship. <clears throat> so now with your other two artists that you kind of signed, is, is Big Henry signed to Super Hot Beats? Yeah. At this point, we don't have a legitimate deal. You know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> basically we're gonna do like a joint venture with Slim American. Okay. Um, in all fairness, I didn't find it, Big Henry. It's Yellow mm -hmm. Wolf's fine, so it's kind of like. <clears throat> I'm just doing the music side of it and then we're gonna come together to put it out. So perfect, perfect. that's perfect for me because this will be <clears throat> quite frankly, this will be the second project that I was able to attach the Super Hot Beats brand to because exactly. um a lot of people don't, didn't pay attention to it, but it was Slim American and Super Hot Beats that put out Trump Music Returns. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So this will be my second opportunity to attach to that brand as well as, you know, so really, I've been working on this label thing a while, uh, yeah. secretly, but I just <laughs> yeah. kind of make moves, you know, I make moves according to, you know, whatever opportunities in place or the situation is. Exactly. Over the last year, all we've done is promote Riot Phoenix and really build up her profile. Mm -hmm. Like, people have no idea that she was not nowhere to be found November last year. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, over the last year, we strategically dropped like three or four records. That's it. I didn't drop a gang of music. Yeah. I kept it real uh, specific. You know, I was like, we're gonna drop one pretty much every quarter, one record every quarter. And we try to put a video behind it. We try to put press, whatever we could. And it caught on. So so now what we've done is we've, we've been able to build a fan base. And what a lot of people aren't doing, they're not quantifying those people, what we did. We figured that, listen, it doesn't matter if it's only 50 kids or if it's 100 kids. Those 100 kids investing into this artist is what's going to make this artist what it is. Right. You know, so, and mathematically, it doesn't take that much. If 100 kids spend 50 bucks with you in a year, you know, that's bread. That's yeah. decent money. So, we're, we're, we're learning how to quantify that and make it be what it is. You know what I mean? So... That's how we did it. So when we we um, announced that she was doing a Kickstarter and that it was a promotional tour, and she gave her whole story. Over the year, we've been taking footage of everything. You know, we even put clips in from y'all's uh, interview mm -hmm. on the thing. So it just goes to show that like every step we documented it, mm -hmm. and when we finally put it together and showed it to people, you know that that you can't help it. That tugs at your heart. It's like yo, she's working her ass off. This ain't even no game. She's yeah. dead serious yeah. Yeah. and. And, and that's what it is. So, <clears throat> and I felt some kind of way at first because I was like, well, people are gonna think that I'm asking for money, but really that's not the case because I've invested already. Like we put top notch production into this. We put top notch everything into what we're doing for her. And now we're starting to see that the fans see that as well. So dude, she's only been up 10 days on the Kickstarter and it's like almost half halfway there. So. People, man, they're showing love, and I think it's a genuine thing. So, I, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, man. plus, like we talked about earlier, it's, it's it also should give her an opportunity from other producers or other yeah people to be like, yeah, like I got right some stuff I exactly. Got some stuff like that's the main thing. The main thing about the producer showcase is, um, <clears throat> you know, as a producer, I have to pr I have to enter this like in, with a selfless uh, energy because mm -hmm. I'm taking her into the fight yeah. you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's like it's kids all over this country man all over the world really who can make this incredible so why not involve them if i put her in front of it and we get something going like who knows man we may end up coming up with a project out of just dealing with our standard i mean i would see that and you know i see them coming up with something on tv here, yeah. like that, so, <laughs> so that might be a good idea you know but i but that's the thing i'm like when we leave these stages people are gonna be like hey man i know we're gonna get a hundred Hey, I got beats for you. I got this. I got that. <clears throat> well, the first thing we're going to do is get that information and figure out how to use it. You know what I mean? So she's going to be dope out of this thing, man. So many people going to know her and understand what the story is. When it finally does catch on, mm -hmm. we're going to have something, man. And one of the things we're really practicing right now is just not wasting time. Yeah. That's really important. Like, we try not to spend a single moment not getting something done or moving towards getting something done so let's keep this movement going man you so know what you got planned for 2015 mm -hmm. 2015 man the other wolf's album's coming out riot's album will already be out big henry will be out i'm working on my own project which i was supposed to do something but i'm not ready yet <laughs> i kind of had to step back once i started working on big henry but all of that's coming man okay. so that's yeah, cool. man. Whenever you drop that, whenever you drop Big Henry, we need a ride down 285. Yeah. Bump in the whip with your boy, yeah. <laughs> and let's listen to these projects. Like, man. I'm serious, man. I got right now. I'm gonna have three projects for us to do that. So we're gonna be on that. We're gonna be on 285 for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. So That's yeah, what's up. I'm ready for that, man. Thank you for man, being on the joint, dog. Future yeah, producer, man. Anything. Y'all yeah. know how I get down, yeah, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got another feature producer, another person from Super Hot Beats, Mike Stallone himself. What's up? Yo, <laughs> Dead in hip hop. <laughs> Been waiting on this for a long time. <laughs> That's what's up. So, so look, I'm not. I'm not even gonna let him 
He, he don't produce for crit. <laughs> don't get see me on top volume four riding dirty. That beat is crazy. And we won't make him tell the story behind that too. Uh, he done produced for Gambino on royalty. Uh, who, who, who else, Mike? Who else? Who else you got? Trinidad James, Kasky. Go. Hurt the Jerk. Uh, yeah, help my, help my. <laughs> <laughs> Hurt the Jerk. Out. Yeah, shout out to Hurt the Jerk. The whole, the whole bay. Look, I, I have, I have a connection with Mike Salon. And when the tech, when Big Chris tape came out, I, I automatically went to Will Powers joint on there, and I went to Mike Salone joint on there first. And when I heard Riding Dirty, I'm like, this is the beat he told me about. <laughs> this is the one that he told me about. Like the story behind it was crazy. And if you hear that. Mike, like Will Power just said um, in, in his interview, Mike samples a lot. And he took a Crit piece and sampled that and Crit rapped on it. That's crazy. So <laughs> please tell us the story, his reaction, how all of that came down and how you put it together. I'm a big Crit fan anyway. So one day I was just riding in my car and I was listening to that track with him and Trinidad James, my trunk. Mm -hmm. The opening first four to eight bars is just crazy. So I was like, oh my God. And um, I had this sample that I was working on for a long time. Like I was just, you know, just working on the sample. I've been wanting to sample it for a long time. So anyways, I made the track, Crit comes in and I'm just waiting, like as he was in there working with Willpower, I'm waiting, I'm like, man, I can't wait to show him this track. I know he gonna love that shit. So he comes in there, first track I play. And he was like, oh my God, like, Yo, cut that track. Oh, I couldn't have did it my, better myself. I oh. couldn't. <laughs> he was like, "You got it, you got it." Yeah. And I was like, and instantly like wrote his joint, and it was over. So for people who don't like really, you know, know about your production style, what is your production style? Because I see trap rap made me do it, but <laughs> but you know, so I'm thinking trap style. But then when I hear your beat that you send in for the joint, I'm like, okay, this is this is this is more mellow, more. It's not like yeah. a trap style. So what would you? Well, how would you explain your production style? I'm like a mutt because I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up half of my life up north and half down south. Okay, okay. And I got influences from both. Like I was real heavy into the you know the up north East Coast boom bap style. But when I moved down south, I fell in love with the trap music too. With like the it was it reminded me of like marching bands because of the mm -hmm. the heavy snares and all that or whatever. So I just try to put all that shit together. And that's pretty much it. All my influences are old school. So it's like Nas, um, Jay-Z, of course. Um, even down south, A-Ball, MJG, um, UGK. And like I fell in love with um, that, the, the screw, the chopping screw. So that's how I came about with the, because I know Crit loved that, you know, the he's, you know third coach. So. I was like, oh, this is perfect. And like, when I was younger, I started making beats when I was like 15, 16 or whatever. And in Chattanooga, Tennessee, nobody was really bumping screw like that or whatever. I was listening to screw. We used to go to uh, these studios and, you know, they'll bust us for time or whatever. So I started chopping our hooks into the, into the beats already. So that's how, you know, I got real busy on that, that chopping screw joint. So my influence is, Every, everywhere, <laughs> all old school, even West Coast. So you're talking about, you know, um, pretty much getting your foot in the door in Chattanooga, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I believe that your mom was very influential in your career progressing, right? Mm -hmm. So tell, tell, tell us a little bit about that story. How, yeah. How, how you <laughs> <laughs> so 15, I, um, that's when I knew I wanted to make beats. I was always around music, like my family was always around music. I just didn't know what I wanted to like. I tried rapping, I tried everything, you know, yeah, like graffiti, b-boy, whatever. We all did. Yeah, we all, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. So, um, but when I moved to Tennessee, that's when I knew, I was like, oh man, I want to make beats. So, I, um, I told my moms and she immediately, like I started doing research, I'm real heavy on like, whenever I want to do something, I do research on it first. And um, I knew that we wouldn't be able to afford like no NPCs and, you know, the big joints or whatever. So I'm just like looking up the cheapest ways and then that's when really Fruit Loops first Fruit came Loops. out. <laughs> so I had like Fruit Loops 2. And wow. I got busy on Fruit Loops 2. And my mom's, um, she would go through her records and put them on CD for me. And we'd leave notes on the CDs like before I go to school or whatever. Check out um, Phyllis Hyman, da -da -da -da, track number, blah, 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 blah. You need to sample that. Mm -hmm. So she'll tell me like sample that, da -da -da -da, like who to go to. Yeah. And um, one day, um, she was like, yo, I need you to 
we, she told me to do some charity for like Toys for Tots or whatever up at the radio station. Turns out she had it set up to where I was going to be on the radio. Like I didn't know I was going to be on the radio. Yeah, so she got in, she got me on the radio and uh, they were asking me like, you know, what you want to do? You know, da, 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 da. I was like, I want to be a producer. Like that's what I want to do. I want to be a producer. Like as soon as I graduate high school, like that's all I want to worry about. So. Um, had all types of people just like calling in or whatever. So my mom would like drive me over to the people's houses who would want to work with me or show me how to do stuff. Um, I actually got my first, you know, big studio experience working with um, the guy that, his name is uh, Willie Kitchens. He's the one that took, um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> you remember the impressions? I don't know if you know that, but uh, Curtis Mayfield was in the Impressions okay. mm. before he went solo. Mm. And Willie Kitchens, when Curtis Mayfield went solo, Willie Kitchens stepped in. And that's who taught me how to really work the studio and all that. Wow. So, yeah, but my mom, she used to... She used to shit the whole thing, yeah. 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 Man. Oh, man. Willpower was like my idol before he even, before I even knew him. Like, I met up with him one day, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm a fan, like, I love your shit, like, you, you're like my version of... Timberland, like you're like, yeah, like, you, you should, yeah, like for yeah. real, like you should be up there, like for real, for real. He would come by because my brother got a tattoo shop or whatever, Tony, and um, we would use that as like our hub. Like, I'll be in there just making beats, all kinds of rappers or whoever coming in there. So, yeah. Yellow Wolf, and we'll bring yeah. willpower, willpower come. I'll be making a track. People, are like, what sample is that, bro? Like, the, <laughs> bro, you got that fire, da, 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 da. so. Uh, we would meet up every once in a while, and then till I ended up on Super Bowl. So that's that's how that's how, that's how it happened. Straight through the tattoo shop. Straight right. through the tattoo shop. Like the tattoo shop was like the was hub. The hub. Yeah, I was say that was like your hub. That's where right? everybody used to come through. Like Damn. everybody used to come through there. Yeah, that was cool. Mm -hmm. And hey, what you use? What you normally use? What's your weapon of choice? Right now, because it used to be I I could use anything like as far mm -hmm. as software or whatever. So at first I started on Fruit Loops all the way up until like version nine, and then I got. I'm tired of it or whatever, mm -hmm. so got reason. Reason I got tired of that fast, and then uh, went back to Fruit Loops. And um, Willpower was like, "Bro, you need to get on Logic. Like Logic <laughs> is <laughs> yes, <we> <laughs> <laughs> so, like Logic <laughs> is the joint, bro. Like, so I got on Logic. I fell in love with it with the first week. Usually it takes me a little bit to. Mm -hmm. Nah, I was like, oh man. So Logic is my joint. Like, logic, my little 24 key keyboard, whatever. In there. In there. My, my samples, my sounds, whatever. So, um, with Super Hot Beats having Side Riot Phoenix um, working with Slum American on Big Henry's project mm -hmm. and um, also on Yellow Boy's project, do you have any placements? Have you worked with these guys? Like, oh, yeah. where is Mike Stallone <laughs> in, the, in the sauce right now? Yeah, me and Big Henry got a track. Um, so. And we got a feature on that track, too. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't drop no names. Don't drop no names. Say too much. I just, I just know it's a fire track. And um, Riot, I haven't worked with her too much because when I came in the the picture, her album was pretty much like finito. So I'm trying to do some stuff. You know, that's family. Everybody's family. So I can just get her on the track anytime. I'm just trying to figure out the right one. It's all about. I want to get that good feeling again. Like I want to feel that shit. Yeah. So but I love working with them. Like that. That's why. I, Super high pieces. Definitely the place for you, man. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like like I said, I know I have a connection with you. I've been in the studio with you. You've played me a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, how, like, how can trap trap rap made me do it? Like, <laughs> I'm like, how can you do that and do this? Yeah. And it's just, I, I don't know many many producers, you know, yeah. that can that that can do it both of them so good. Mm -hmm. So when I hear that and automatically willpower, I'm just like. You're in the perfect situation. Yeah. So again, I'm happy for you sure. and and everything that's gonna come for the future for you. Cause I already know, you know, like you're on a team that already grinds and you have that sure. drive as well and you have that sound. So yeah, they push me. Yeah. Cause you know, it's sometimes where, I, cause I'm not used to structure too much. Like I've always <laughs> been a just kind of out on my yeah yeah fly just fly. With so it, you know, being on a on a super high beats is like sometimes I might just slip off a little bit because I'm so used to being all willy nilly or whatever so but the structure is very very good i love it i love the i'm just free like because i've been on other teams before or whatever or just you know work with other mm -hmm. people or whatever on projects and it's like they want a specific like everybody you just said like i'm just i don't just do one sound like i can't 
you know, there's sometimes where I don't feel like doing that whole boom bap joint or whatever. Yeah. Like I do want to get rap, uh, trap, trap ish yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I want to get ratchet sometimes. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm a hood nigga still. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the project my whole life. <laughs> right. So what can, what can we expect next from you? Like as far as any placements you're looking that you're gonna be on that you yeah, can uh, mention or I got some joints that I really um Earth Jerk, Big Henry, Ryan Phoenix, Caskey. Those are people that we work that we worked with already. We got some solid tracks, so mm -hmm. those are the people I can name. But I got some others. Yeah. Just just be on the lookout. Yeah, just be on the lookout. Yeah, yeah. 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 I just want people to know that be on the lookout exactly. for your name yeah. and, and be look out for your production. So yeah. I just want to make sure everybody. And where can they hear more of Mike Stallone music? SoundCloud or yeah, YouTube? Sound. What you got? Yeah, SoundCloud.com slash Mike Stallone. How you spell Mike? M Y K E. <laughs> Appreciate you. Uh -huh. Yeah, M Y K E. Stallone likes the best of Stallone. Okay. Well, thank you for being another no, feature. Appreciate y'all. You gotta yeah, come out of the court, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You gotta come out of the court. <laughs> I gotta get somebody some buckets, man. Right. Look, Central Park, come holla at your boy. You gonna bust your ass, too. <laughs> <All right. laughs>